give the Las Vegas Aces some credit for being ball. Entire postseason, she couldn't shoot. Oh. Well, by the way, we need to be fair. If we're going to talk about the Liberty because we went to the game and we care about it mm-hmm. now, we also have to be critical. Like, the good and the bad come oh, together. Oh. And Brianna Stewart, until last night, had never lost in a finals or championship. She was 6-0. and oh. Yeah. And what happened last night? She was terrible. And they went to inbound the ball to her. It was like she was allergic to it at the end and missed the big three. Number two. Max Scherzer. And yes, I'm counting Atlanta last September as the playoffs when it comes to Max Scherzer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Do I need to tee you up anymore, Ev? No. I mean, she, Max Scherzer's number one. Yeah. Honestly, when I think of the playoff failures, especially of recent time, Max Scherzer is probably number one on the list. That's why I'm curious who the hell is number I one. Know. Okay. Number one. Odell Beckham Jr., the boat trip into a drop trip all over Lambeau Field in 2016. Wow. He had one shot at the postseason with the Giants. He wore the Lawrence Taylor jersey out on the field. He was an unmitigated, frightened turtle out at Lambeau (laughs) Field that night. And for that reason, the megastar that came with Odell, he's number one. Interesting. How come no Artemi Panarin? (laughs) Well, he did score that game winner. What about Sturkin? Oh, she's stuck. You know what? I'm nah, not going to take the bait nah, here. Nah, 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 I'm nah, not nah. going to take the I'm bait. Just asking. You, you were a homer leaving Panarin out. Well, he was probably number six. All right. But I figured I didn't want to do too much hockey. Right, get play. out of here. All we're right. joined by the legendary. You see him on TV now all the time with the playoffs going on. Alex Rodriguez. Hey, Rod, Tiki Barber, Evan Roberts. Thanks for coming on. How are you? What's up, Tiki? What's up, Evan? Thanks for having me. All's good, man. The great Ron Berkowitz set you up. I appreciate you. Uh, You know, it's funny. We were thinking about the Phillies. We were talking about the Phillies two days ago, Ev, and Evan was mad because everybody that could have and should have been a Yankee or Met is on the Phillies right now, including their manager, Rob Thompson. You knew him back when he was with the Yankees. Tell us about him because I don't know if a lot of people know about Rob Thompson. Yeah, it's both Rob Thompson and Kevin Long, the legendary hitting coach, uh, who just continues to go to different World Series every year, it seems like. Um, you know, Rob Thompson is one of the best baseball people I've ever been around. I, I learned from him as much as anyone, and I think Jeter would tell you the same thing. I mean, he's uh, he's Canadian. Uh, that was what the uh, the George Steinbrenner used to call him. He was one of uh, Mr. Steinbrenner's favorites, <laughs> the Canadian. And he would basically run... Uh, what, did that, what did that have to do with anything, though, Alex? <laughs> Say what? What did that have to do with anything? That he's Canadian? No, I mean that's, that was his nickname. So oh, that's what oh, 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 I got it. That's how George remembered him. Apparently, oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Now that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He called him the Canadian. He was just loved by everybody. He would arrive at spring training at three o'clock in the morning. Just baseball guy, paid his dues. It, it breaks my heart to see him in any other color but pinstripes because. Uh, he is synonymous with the Yankee pinch drive. Well, he's, it's funny you say that. Guy. It's funny you say that because Evan, basically, I didn't realize this, that when they fired Joe Girardi, that he was their first interview. First guy to interview. And yeah. he could have. And why wasn't he the Yankee manager if he was so revered inside the clubhouse and the organization? Yeah, that's uh, that's a question for management. But um, we thought he would be a life Yankee. And, uh you know, I'm happy that he got an opportunity, and uh, he's, he's done the best he can do with it. He's doing a great job. There's something you and Derek Jeter need to do, and I say this as a Met fan when I bring this up. I'm so sick and tired of hearing how loud Philadelphia is. <laughs> You've played at Yankee Stadium, the old one and the new one, and it was louder or as loud, if I'm being fair, as Citizens Bank Park, right? It's not like Philly's louder than us. Come on. No, I think the old stadium was as loud as it get, but, but the bank in Philly – because it's more like the old stadium and it's a little bit tighter, um, it, it's, it's as loud as the old stadium. And I think it's louder than the new stadium. Even at certain moments, like I guess 09, 09 was the first year of the stadium. When you're hitting a game-winning home run or a big game-tying home run against the Twins in the Divisional Series, you didn't feel that stadium rock? You, you did, but if you go to the old stadium, it's probably about 30 or 40% louder because you're so much closer to the field, and it was built very vertical, mm. and it was old school. It was like all, all the, you know, Fenway, all the old stadiums have more of that feel. Old Tiger Stadium, uh, that's not a nod to Yankee Stadium and the new one, but it's just built a little bit differently, and a different audience as well. I, I need to ask you something that's very important, even though it's going to bother me. And, and your honesty is what's needed, so even if it does bother me, I'm a grown damn man, I have to live with it. And that's 2000. You wanted to be a Met. Your nickname was Shayrod. That was a real nickname, right? That wasn't something that was made up. You, your nickname was Shayrod, correct? 
I guess some people call me like that. But <laughs> the funny story about that was that I, I told my agent, Scott Boris, that I would take a 50% haircut to come play in New York with the Mets. And I just thought it was a perfect story for me personally, for the Mets, for mm-hmm. baseball. Uh, you know, I grew up watching Magic and Bird. I thought, you know, Jeter, A-Rod would be fun. Um, but it didn't work out that way, and uh, I went to Texas and then ended up in New York for my last 15. So why do you think that narrative <laughs> yeah, came a- out? Like, do you think the Mets just didn't want, which I don't understand, you're in the prime of your career, do you think it was like an axe to grind or a way to get out of signing you, even on a, a contract that wasn't as big as Texas? Why do you think that happened then? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I would be speculating just like you guys. I mean, I, I was never told the real story or if they didn't want to step up and pay the market, even though it was 50% discount. Mm. Or, or perhaps, I don't know if Scott had an agenda. I honestly I don't know, and I don't want to speculate. Right. But I was kind of bummed out because yeah. I felt like I'm a Mets fan growing up. Uh, 86 was a great year as, as a young 9, 10-year-old. That was when I was in Miami watching the guys. And I thought it would be an awesome fit. And when it, you know, I was hoping for one thing, it went the other way. And that's the way it goes. You just keep rolling. Yeah, it sounds to me like he's not saying Scott Boris because that's his agent and that's his <sighs> guy. So should the, should the Mets fans also now be nervous? <laughs> That Pete Alonso hires Scott Boris. Good question, Tiggy. <laughs> like, is he going someplace else? <laughs> uh oh, Alex, you there? Yeah, I'm here, but I don't. I don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> that silence scared the crap out of me. All right, yeah. no, 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 I'll no. take that as a no comment, Alex. All right, exactly. All right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. So we're watching the broadcast, the Fox broadcast, and you know, Astros are down two nothing. Uh, Jeter brings up the 04 Yankees and the Red Sox, and we get this kind of laugh from Big Poppy. What did you think in that moment when when Jeets brought that up? Uh, that was funny. You know, we were joking funny around last night. Funny in a good night. way or funny in a bad way? Well, I mean, look, I, I, it, because 09 happened, I think it's funny. If 09 wouldn't have happened, I would have, like, tried to bear hug him and tackle Poppy. Um <laughs> No, but uh, we were joking. They, they've shown this thing like 900 times, and every time we look up, I've been with Fox now nine years, we've played more Red Sox championships than anything uh, I've ever seen. And I said yesterday, I think you're the executive producer of this, Poppy. That's why they keep showing it. <laughs> That's great. Do you, do you, we're talking about we're talking Alex Rodriguez, and obviously the NLCS continues tonight in Phoenix. The ALCS is now 2-1. It feels like the Diamondbacks are dead. Do you give them any shot to get off the canvas and get hot against this Phillies team now that they're out of Philadelphia? Honestly, I think it's less about Arizona. I think they've had a phenomenal year, and they've overachieved, and they've done some great things. But Phillies, I mean, they're the class of baseball. And Dave Dombrowski, uh, an old-school veteran player, the theme coming back is, you know, money ball is losing ball, and old-school baseball is coming back, and I love it. Starting pitchers coming back less numbers, and all of that. And Dave Dombrowski, who's been around for almost three decades and won championships in multiple places, has built a team in Philly, the roster that has power, speed, pitching, hitting. And there were, you know, one game, no, two wins away from the World Series last year, and they didn't rest in the lures. They went out and got the number one free agent in Trey Turner, and now they're six wins away from bringing the title back to Philly. You know, when you when you see what they're doing, and you talk a little bit about the, I don't know, getting away from the, the, the power of the analytics, we heard a lot of that with the Yankees in the, after, after the season. You know, Aaron Judge talked about this, even Hal mentioned it as well. H- how much do the Yankees need to change what they're doing? Because it's clear something's going to change. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say you have to change everything pretty much. Whatever they've been doing has not worked. And it's not that it hasn't worked. Look, the Braves were the class of baseball, and they got upset by a great Philly team. Things happen in October. But what happens is you can miss so often by so much. And I think that's why the fan base has lost complete trust in the people making baseball decisions. Um, I don't think there's anything Aaron Boone could do. I mean, with with the hands that was dealt, uh, I give him an A. You know, he's done a, a phenomenal job. It's just how... The architecture of the team is very challenging, you know? Yeah. What do you think they need to change more? Do you think it's more stop relying on plat power, kind of have more left-hand hitters who put bat on ball? Like, if you're running the Yankees and you're Brian Cashman, what are you looking to change to bring this team back to prominence? Well, w- one of the themes, there's a pattern recognition when you look at winning teams. Uh, if you look at both teams that are going to play tonight, they both have an everyday number one hitter and everyday number two hitter. 
Um, you know, Altuve plays every day. Alex Bregman played 161 games. Uh, you have usually two great starting pitchers. You have a back end of the bullpen. Uh, you have athleticism. You have defense. You have youth, energy, grit. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what Paul O'Neill's exit velocity was, but I know he's a five-time world champion. Um, and, and if I was to appraise Tiki as a football player, all numbers does for me is look at Tiki and his back, but I can't project what he has in his heart, mm-hmm. his courage, and how hard he's working, how committed he's working. Maybe he got married. Maybe he has a couple young kids, and he's at a point in his life where now we are ready to take a bet on him. Analytics only tells you about the back, but they don't. it's hard to forecast in the future. Mm. That's a, it's an interesting way you put it because it, that's more personnel, right? It's getting to know the player. Are the Yankees not doing that? I, I don't know what the Yankees are doing. I'm not close. I, they never ask me any, any questions, and you know that's not my job. Yeah. I, I'm their biggest fan, and I'm hoping that things turn around. Uh, but it, it just seems like whatever they're doing, it's it's it, it's not working. Well, the Yankees have also done you dirty. They gave out 13 to Joey Gallo. Did that <laughs> piss you off, honestly? <laughs> it, it didn't make me. It did not make me happy. <laughs> well, I, it shouldn't because it's weird. Your number isn't retired. So I, I ask you: Have you ever had a conversation with the Yankees about where and how they feel about you and how they would honor you down the road? Is that something you've ever discussed with them? No, I, I, and look, with my job on TV, and Tiki, you know that yeah. I'm, I'm too critical to the Yankees, and that, that doesn't help my case. Mm. But, you know, I get paid to, to tell the truth, and if you guys ask me a question, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you exactly as I see it and not sugarcoat it because I want my number retired. If it's not retired, then so be it. Mm. So this is, does it bother you, though, that it's not retired? Yeah, of course it bothers me. <laughs> does that but, bother you more but, or the I, Hall of Fame bothers you? I, 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 I would say this. It's, it's less about bother. But of course, it would be nice to be recognized in, you know, one of the coolest, you know, places to be in Yankee history. But, you know, that that's not my decision. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously the place you identify with most, the Yankees, correct? For sure, for sure. Yeah. And the championship cemented that in two thousand and nine. How would you bridge that? Would you ever like get back and go see How or talk to whoever the powers? Oh no, that no, be? no. My, my relationship with How and the organization is, organization is fine. But when I'm on television and they ask me a question, yeah. I can't sugarcoat it and make something look or pretend because it's not. I wish I could say that things were going great and they're running there like the Phillies and, and the Braves and Houston and the Dodgers, but that's that's not what I feel, I, so that's not what I'm going to say. Yeah, I feel I, you. I, I have know. a theory about this, and tell me if you agree with me on this. The longer this franchise doesn't win, I think the closer they will come to honoring you because 2009 was a long time ago. And I think if they don't win a championship, because the Yankees have so many freaking titles that sometimes like one isn't enough is the attitude among some fans. Well, if they don't win a title, I think it's going to cause them to say, boy, that 09 thing was really mm-hmm. special. And I think gets you closer to the Yankees honoring you. You agree with that theory at all? I can buy that theory, but I, I don't want that to happen. I want them to win. I want them to turn this around. We have the greatest fans in, in baseball. And they deserve to be in October. Do you know how difficult it is not to make the playoffs in 2023? Yes, I'm yeah. a Met fan. It's it's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. But but I got to tell you, I, I, I'm very bullish on the Mets long term, and I think Steve Cohen will do anything in his power as he already started moving and shaking the tree a little bit to get this team back on track. But there's going to be tremendous accountability, whether you like it or not, with the Mets. How much do you think either or both of these teams? Um, go all in for Otani, and should they? I, I don't think if you're the Yankees, you're in a position where you can make that move right now. I, I think you have to first – you have two elite players in Garrett Cole and Aaron Judge, and you have 24 spots to, to, to work, and you have to reshape this whole thing. I was spending time with Jim Crane, one of the greatest owners in the game of baseball today from the Houston Astros, and Jim Crane is sitting there with you know Jeff Bagwell, Bizio, uh, Nolan Ryan. I mean, he's got 125 years of major league experience on his ear. He's also an owner that, you know, he's a very present owner, but he also pitched in college. And he's basically a little bit like Jerry Jones, but he, he's the owner, but he's also part, you know, GM and runs baseball operations. Mm. We're talking to Alex Rodriguez. Are you going to trade the next Carl Anthony Towns? <laughs> <laughs> How we're, was that excited, going, by the way? we're excited for the year. <laughs> that was a quick one. That was a quick pivot. I yeah. tried to sneak it in. Maybe you'll accidentally <laughs> say yes. 
<laughs> oh, oh, I got I got a question. Wait, There's, wait. You oh, want to ask this yeah. one? No, 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 I'm no, not. No, you ask it. No, I'm not. Well, I'm afraid to ask it. You ask it. <laughs> the Anthony Edwards <laughs> question. Anthony. You know what the thing? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you got you to gotta confirm or deny this, yeah, yeah, Alex. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm sorry oh, wow. I'm bringing this up, but uh, there's a rumor that Anthony Edwards asked you, how did you mess up the J-Lo thing? What did you say to oh, him? Oh, <laughs> no, th- th- <laughs> that, that never happened, but I saw uh, <laughs> I saw someone uh, tweet about that, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, but, it but didn't let me tell you something. Happen. Let me tell you something about Anthony Edwards. Um, is I am so excited about this young man. He's 22 years old. He came from Georgia, and all he wants to do is be one of the greatest basketball players of all time, and he puts in the work. Uh, Carl Anthony had a great, great summer, played for Dominican Republic, played exceptionally well. He's in phenomenal shape, and we're very hopeful that we have a solid year this year. Yeah, it, how – you know – did you, you didn't? Did you play basketball? Like, do you know the game? I played a little in high school, a little point guard. So this transition into being part owner, and obviously you're heavily involved with the with the team. Like, is it is it comfortable? Like, is it natural to you? It's very natural because I'm a novice and I'm getting to learn. I'm starting like in kindergarten, <laughs> and we've hired a great, great president of basketball operations, Tim Conley. He was the architect of the Denver Nuggets. And he's doing a phenomenal job. And I get to learn from him. I get to learn from Anthony Edwards, uh, Anthony Towns. I, in baseball, him, Evan, I think I would be very frustrated because I'm too close to it. You see how when I start talking about the Yankees, I start I kind of start going in. <laughs> I start spiraling because I'm too close to it and I see too many things. Where in basketball, I'm just getting started. I'm learning a lot. I'm well, having a lot of fun. That leads me to this, because obviously you tried to buy the Mets. Do you <laughs> think, looking back on it, if you got the Mets, that maybe it wouldn't have worked the way you had hoped? That maybe you wouldn't have been the owner that on paper you're like, oh, I'm going to be a great owner. I know baseball. I love mm-hmm. baseball. Like Looking back on it, do you think it would have worked? I think it would have worked, yes. Um, but But at the same time, I'm very thankful for Steve Cohen. I always say we were the second winners. <laughs> and I'm just thrilled to be part of the NBA family. Um, I get treated very well. I'm enjoying myself, and I get a chance to be a lot, around a lot of great young players and mentor them, and uh, I'm enjoying the, the league. All right, so for, last one for me before we let you go here, Alex. Your daughter's at Michigan. I hear they're cheating in football. <laughs> oh, what does she know about any of that? How is she doing up there at Ann Arbor? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to have to get her on the reporting <laughs> sidelines. I don't know anything about that. Uh, just It's just a report that came out that they, they're getting investigated for cheating or I, something. I, I, I'm just happy to be a Michigan dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep, right, wa- we'll keep watching the playoffs, Alex. We appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you, Alex. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Be good, man. A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez. So the story with Anthony Edwards mm, wasn't false. true. False. Yeah. I'm glad you asked that one. Yeah. I felt weird saying <laughs> screwing up with J-Lo. Like, it's just weird. <laughs> By the way, he's damn right his number should be retired. Mm. 13? 13 yeah. should. Add, yeah. they, they retire every number. A-Rod's a freaking World Series hero. Put his number up. Well, yeah. What do you think the reason is? Now, obviously, the Yankees and A-Rod had a bad relationship. A-Rod has but said they've cleared it up, I don't so think, they're fine I don't now. I don't think it's about the critical nature of his job. as Because we're people are smart enough within organizations and outside of them to know that it's your job, right? You can't mm. you can't say to people the opposite of what's obvious. Yeah, I don't think that's it either. I think so. It's got to be something else. No, I'll tell you what the something else is and how it's changed. In my opinion, Alex Rodriguez was a very controversial figure when he played here. He was controversial amongst Yankee fans, mm-hmm. among non-Yankee fans. Obviously, you had the steroid stuff. You had the mad at the Yankees. Yankees mad at him. Then he comes back, and then they basically forced him to retire. Yeah. And I think at that time, Yankee fans did not have a positive view towards Alex. I think seven years later, that view has changed. I agree. Because of what I laid out earlier, that this team has not had great success. And I think for a generation of Yankee fans who didn't grow up in the dynasty, who are a little bit younger than Sean, their success is 9 mm-hmm. And their hero is A-Rod. So what, where I think things changed between 2016 and 2023 is if he was announced at Yankee Stadium today... I think he would get a standing ovation. If he was announced, even at the end of his career, like people cheered for him out of respect, but it wasn't the same. I think there's more liking and loving to Alex now than there was seven years ago. So if you asked me this question in 2016, I would have said, you got to give it time. They can't retire his number yet. We are sitting here seven, eight years later, partially because of the failures of this current Yankee team. Mm -hmm. I think that if they announced they were retiring his number, that place would sell out, and there'd be a generation of Yankee fans who would pack that place in support of him. Yeah. You see the one answer question he didn't answer. The, the Pete Alonzo one? Pete's leaving. 
Well, he's no, gone. he don't like. Uh-huh. No. I took he's the out. same thing out of that he's team. Out. No, that, that was just my. That was my interpretation. No, that's not. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> he doesn't like Scott Boris. Like he left Scott Boris at the end of his career. He doesn't like Scott mm. Boris, mm. and so I think that was a silence about Scott. And even the question about okay. We get it, Alex. You wanted to be a Met, which just broke my heart hearing oh, that again. My God. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I died I gotta, inside. I gotta tell you, the narrative that he crafted, Alex versus Jeets, that that would have been awesome. <gasps> oh, <laughs> Evan would a young Evan would have been calling him a mercenary piece of crap. Let's be what honest. I have? No. <laughs> no. All the failures he had until 09, you would have crushed him as no, a Met. No, 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 no because no. we're different than you, dude. Be- we're different yeah. than you. The Met fan w- hasn't had that. We haven't had he would have been a hero to us. Shay Rod being a Met fifty percent pay cut. 50, well, that one is a okay. Well, oh. This thing just pisses me off to no end, and it's either he's not telling the truth, mm-hmm. it's either Boris wouldn't allow it, which is what I think he was alluding to, or one hundred percent, or the Mets franchise oh led by Steve Phillips and Fred and Jeff Wilpon because was he, so cheap <laughs> that they didn't want to pay a Rod on the discount. But I, but if he really wanted to go to the Mets, he kind of knew that he had to do that. Right, he couldn't take it the full freight. They, yeah, they, they weren't going to give him the full deal. They weren't going to take no. the full freight, so he had to say. Yeah, that. but if you're the Mets and you had a chance to get him at a discount, and he's the best player in baseball at 25 years old, and he's better than Jeter, he was mm-hmm. like that. I, I am so. Hold on, <laughs> you're now more angry at the Will Ponds so than you more, ever were. <laughs> no, because I think I took a lot of Boris blame in that. Oh, I see. In that answer, I see. and that's why he was silent about Alonzo. Yeah. He don't like Boris because mm-hmm. Boris is like, are you kidding me? We're not taking a freaking discount. Yeah. And he probably connived his way into not doing it. But that whole thing just pisses me off. And, Sean, you don't know what you're talking about. We would have turned on him. Are you kidding me? Yeah, come on. You would have. You guys Sean, are ridiculous. Sean, that's, that's we a, treat Piazza dude, like a deity around here. Don't, 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 don't let him trigger you. No, I'm not him trigger you. First of all, I love A-Rod. I'm, no, no, I'm no, one of the not you, Sean. I'm, the, I'm talking to Evan. Don't let Sean oh, don't trigger let him trigger me. Okay. Don't let him trigger you. Try not to. The only thing I will say is, you're right. You treat Piazza like a hero. He got so many clutch hits. We dealt with a lot of years of A-Rod not getting clutch hits. That's why 09 was the culmination. Hey, Sean. Sean, I'm going to say this very politely. So Alex would have signed for the 01 season. Uh-huh. In 01, 02, 03, 04, and 05. That's the first how many years of his contract? One, mm-hmm. two, three, four. Do you know how many times the Mets made the playoffs? I guess none. The, the answer is none. Mm-hmm. So you know what you could do over there? You don't know what the hell you're talking okay. about. So I, we don't know if they would have made the playoffs. Your bar of success is very different I do understand than our that. pathetic bar. I just think revisionist history, you forget yeah, how long it was. But you're thinking postseason. And yes, it, and he was until he wasn't. That that's what you're thinking postseason. Evans just thinking, give me something to get excited yeah. about in the second half of the season. That's what he would have brought. But this is like a back to the future thing. If they make the playoffs those four years, maybe your vision as a Medfit of never making the playoffs changes, and then you're more angry of man, he never Sean, got these hits to put a show. Sean, it, there's a thing called alternate universes. Okay, <laughs> uh huh. There is no sports alternate universe that bothers me more. Than Alex Rodriguez not being a Met. The only thing that's approached it is probably the Durant foot on the line thing, but that's more recent. Not Griffey with the Mets? No, not because you know why? Was he he older? And history told us it wouldn't have worked out. Fair. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the Griffey, and I loved Ken Griffey Jr. Of course. We all did. Yeah. So, no, the biggest what if in the history of New York sports, I'll take it a step further, forget just me, the biggest what if in the history of New York sports is that man not being a Met after the 2000 season. Hmm. Okay, I, I get it. He's fun. your guy. Thirteen, two thousand nine. I get all I, of that. I think we're agreeing more than we're disagreeing. No, but th- think about the Mets we revere, Evan and I's lifetime. Piazza, Jake, uh, Alfonso, Wright, Reyes. They never won anything. This is uh, freaking Alex I Rodriguez. Know. He's one of the greatest I, baseball players ever. I know you guys aren't these Met fans, but let's be honest. There's a lot of Met fans who still haven't gotten over Carlos Beltram at the bat on the No, show. I get you. Mm-hmm. I'm well, also wrong, those people. I'm also it. just still incredibly surprised that Tiki had the star power to get A-Rod to come here. I mean, I know some people. A-Rod was never coming on this radio station. I am going I to Augustino's believe- tomorrow night. <laughs> You're going to what? Augustinos. With A-Rod? No. no. <laughs> he's, he's, I'm sure he's in Arizona. Or something. Well, what's going on? This place has the best chop in the city? Or what's up? Dude, you've uh, never been? Uh, no. no. Okay, I'll, maybe I'll take you guys. Maybe. 